So after a wonderful talk by Dr. Bhavani, I'll start the next talk on the nomenclature and hybrid ECMO. So we have discussed about the VA and VV. Now there is something known as hybrid ECMO that we will be discussing now. I have nothing to disclose. So we know that ke we should have a standard nomenclature and uh, the ELSO task force has taken a task to standardize the nomenclature for the ECLS also. So though there are certain rules for nomenclature. Drainage and return cannula is separated by hyphen. So when you put a hyphen, you know that's drainage and return cannula. So this is a drainage cannula and this is the return cannula. When you put a capital, it means the major vessels have been connected. When you put a small, it means the smaller vessels have been connected. Okay. So you require second drainage, you require second uh, return. So you can put both AA or VV. Okay. Disturb profusion is representing the venous drainage. If major, then labeled with the capital. And as I told you, if it is smaller vessel, small vessel. Whenever you use a double lumen, you put DL in front of VV. You can put the uh, affix when you want to label which vessel has been used. So VF, that means femoral vessel has been used. When we say VJ means jugular vessel has been used. V stand for vein and A stand for artery. So these are the different abbreviations that can be used for uh, uh, defining the uh, different uh, components. Primary and secondary access, the cannula site, okay, and the center cannulation versus the peripheral cannulations. With that basics, we'll go to the type of ECMO. V ECMO and VV ECMO that's been discussed. And there are two more types which we define, that is hybrid and variants of ECMO. Okay. So variants of ECMO, here the mode remains the same, there is no change in the mode of uh, uh, ECMO, it is going to remain the same whether it is VV or VA, it is going to remain the same. What we are going to do is, we are going to put an additional drainage cannula. So because the drainage is not sufficient, you might put an additional drainage cannula or an additional vascular access and that is what we call the VVV or VVA where the additional drainage is being put. Or you are using the same system VV ECMO but you are going to use a, it is just the, the equipment what you are using is different. You are using a different oxygenator and just that is being used to remove the carbon dioxide and that is what we call as ECCO2R removal. While when we talk about hybrid ECMO, it means there are two modes of ECMO are combined. So it is VA plus VV both are combined together and that is what we call as a hybrid ECMO. The importance of hybrid ECMO, it supports both heart as well as lung. So it may be one drainage and two returns here. So it is going to be VV, VA or VV, AV and you can have a two drainage and two returns that is VV, VA and VV, AV. So this is a variant of ECMO where we put a VV, we go one by one, VV, V ECMO, there is two additional drainage has been put, okay, then why we require to put two drainage, one is for additional drainage, if your drainage is not sufficient, so you can have a drainage from jugular vein, you can have a drainage from femoral vein, and the return will go, you can see the return will go to the right atrium. So this is known as VVV and this is commonly used for once if the drainage is not sufficient and second when there is a high recirculation. So when there is a high recirculation you can plan for a VVV and that is what we call also known as triple cannulation. Okay. And this is again used only for the lung support. Second is VVA that is basically for cardiac support. Again, you are not able to drain completely, so you have a additional drainage cannula and that is for better drainage of RV. The advantage of it, this is, suppose the heart recovers and lung still takes a time to recover, then you can switch over easily from VA, VV to, uh, VA to VV ECMO. So it becomes easier to switch over to VV ECMO. Now, hybrid ECMO. You suppose both heart and lung, that is what I told you. 
Now it is usually required when you are already on ECMO. So the patients who are on cardiac ECMO, they require lung support or the patient who are on respiratory ECMO, they require cardiac support. That's the usual time. Sometimes in, at the initiation so we require both the supports. Okay. So what are the indications for VAV ECMO or hybrid ECMO? It requires as at the com combined support we require at the time of initiation. So for an example, patient is a septic shock with ARDS and the inotropic score is more than 100. In that case, we, even there are no, uh, no evidence of myocarditis, you might have to put the patient on VAV ECMO because we have to support both the organs. And once the hemodynamic patient stabilizes, you can get rid of VA, uh, the A part or the arterial component and just convert into VV ECMO. Second thing is when the patient has got both myocarditis as well as patient is in ARDS. For an example, dengue or H1N1 or leptospirosis, where you have a patient also have myocarditis and ARDS. So in that case, again, we have to start with the VAV ECMO. Most of the time, as I told you, it is you require to shift the patient. So when the patient is on VV ECMO, has cardiac arrest, not responding to conventional CPR, you might have to switch over to VA. So you convert to VAV. Or when the patient is on VV ECMO for a long time and they develop right heart failure or they develop permanent severe permanent hypertension or they go into septic myocarditis, again that time you require to give cardiac support. Third is what we discussed when there is unstable hemodynamics with a high inotropic score will get more than 100. Again you have to think of putting the patient on VAV. And refractory hypoxia which is not responding to whatever you do with VV ECMO still and you need to correct it. See it is important is that you need to correct it. If, if it is a VV ECMO, uh, if the situation even 80 or 75, but your lactates are fine, your patient hemodynamically is stable, no acidotic, urine output is good, patient is conscious, then you may not require to do anything, just wait and watch. But in that case, if suppose you have a patient with a hypoxia and has high lactates, then in that case you probably need to treat it and you might require to turn it to VAV. This is one of the very rare condition which you require to use it. Or patient on VA ECMO requiring respiratory support. For an example, patient develops North-South syndrome or Hartley-Quinn syndrome, where patient the cardiac condition starts improving, but the lungs are still bad. So in that case, they develop Hartley-Quinn syndrome, and you require to put the patient on VA V ECMO. Or when the patient the cardiac stunning, and as you know that the coronaries and the brain, especially the right side gets the circulation, uh, blood flow from the native circulation. And if your underlying lungs also bad, in that case, you switch over to VAV ECMO so that it can give a better coronary perfusion, better oxygenated blood to the coronary, and that might improve cardiac stunning. And again, to lower the neurological injury. Okay. So this is the evidence where uh, Zoa et al. has meant about the hybrid ECMO and how it helps. So patient with a uh, hybrid ECMO, if the, the flow in the VV part, on the venous part is 0%, if there is no flow, then your saturation in the left ventricle is around 70% only. But the same if you see, when you increase the flow support on the VV part and you decrease the flow on the VA part, the saturation in the uh, left ventricle blood also increases. It goes to from 70% it goes to 96%. So that is the way your VAV ECMO helps. So when you have more flow on venous part, definitely the saturation will improve. Okay. Now what are the difference between VAV and VAV? It's just a nomenclature that is different. When you convert the VV ECMO into v, uh, VAV, then it becomes VVA because we are converting v no venous. So the, the first two letter tells you what was an original mode and the last will be tell you what you have converted into. So VVA means originally it was a v no venous which is switched over to VAV, uh, v, VVA and VAV means originally it was a uh, cardiac ECMO and that is switched over to uh, VAV ECMO. Okay. Again VV, VA or VAVV same. Here only you are using two drainage as well as two return cannulas and there is no other difference in that. Okay. Now depending upon configuration also the and our vascular access what you use you have a different types of ECMO. You can use double lumen uh, IJV and subclavian arteries so that becomes VVA ECMO 
or you can have a double limb jugular with a femoral artery it like that can become vva ecmo or this this are a different approach you can use okay so this is the different ways you can use vva okay you drain from femoral vein return in i drain from ijv and return in the femoral vein right up to the ra that is what usually we perform but you can use uh, drain both from from femoral vein and return you can give to the uh, ra you can do that also so these are the different combinations or you can use double lumen you can drain from the double lumen and return back to the ra or that also you can do it or in the sorry in the artery that you can do it so these are the different combinations and permutations you can use and uh, for a hybrid mode so depending on what site you are using and what vessels you are using you have a different combination okay suppose you are using double lumen ijv and subclavian artery usually it is a done when the patient is waiting for a transplant and uh, he is develops right heart failure and you require to put the patient convert to v, patient to vav vva ecmo in that case what you do is double lumen ijv and you can cannulate subclavian artery now because everything is in the upper part you can easily mobilize the patient that is why it's known as walking hybrid or same thing you can do uh, with the you can connect the femoral artery then mobilization becomes difficult and then it is known as sedate hybrid okay or you can have a uh, configuration of vpa configuration now you can drain from the ra and you can put your return cannula right up to the pulmonary artery that can be possible with the help of protect cannula which is still not available this is not a common thing which we you do but this will help in the right heart failure when the right heart fails in your cannula you can push it into the pulmonary artery and you can bypass the right heart and uh, it acts as a uh, you know uh, then you don't require to convert into vav or you can have a again with uh, VA ECMO you can convert to VA PA ECMO for a right heart failure again. So you have a hybrid ECMO with a transceptor configuration. So we have VA ECMO with atrial septostomy. So in that case, when if there is a refractory hypoxia or pulmonary hypertension, so you can convert into VA ECMO with a atrial septostomy. You can have a VA ECMO with a uh, one of the return limb going to the left atria also. again that is through the atrial septostomy you can put it and so it will bypass the the right heart so in case of refractory hypoxia pulmonary hypertension and right heart failure you can do that combination also or you can have a uh, you can drain from both vein and the left atria and return to the atrial in case of cardiac stunning or patient develop lv distension and cardiac stunning in a va ecmo you can put an additional drainage to the from the left atria and thereby you can help the patient in uh, reducing the cardiac or by by venting the lv and if you see the number of cases uh, of respiratory ecmo in 2017 especially data from 2017 to 2021 okay the elso data so around 1 to 2% of the patient requires hybrid ecmo and the survival remains significantly low except in the neonates okay in all the neonates pediatrics and adults situation uh, come in uh, patient when it has been compared it, the only person only 1 to 2% person, person require hybrid and the survival does is significantly low probably because that patient are definitely more worse mm. for a cardiac ecmo if you see again in adult pediatric and uh, neonatal one the around 3 to 5% person, the patient here the patient require hybrid ecmo is more and the survival it at par so survival is better because most of the time we use hybrid ecmo here when the patient develop north south syndrome so when the patient start developing improve the heart starts improving you require it so the 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 survival is better with hybrid ecmo in cardiac patient in ecpr again 2% of the patient requires hybrid ecmo and uh, survival at par again because pro, again the heart starts improving and you require to switch over to uh, vav because uh, uh lungs are still taking time so again the outcome here is better so this are the total data from 2013 to 2018 around 580 patients required a uh, hybrid mode of ecmo with a survival for around 40% survival okay again university of michigan has published the data of around 31 patients on vva 
pediatric 8 in uh, adults are 23 and uh, the most common indication for pediatric was north south syndrome in 60 percent of the patient in adult it was most commonly was right heart failure okay these are the complications in pediatrics and this survival in pediatric was 60 percent as compared to adults it is 40 percent again in pediatric because mainly the cardiac ECMO required to switch over to VAV the survival is better as compared to when the venous, uh, VV ECMO requires to get switch over to hybrid ECMO. Now when you manage uh, do the VAV you require to control the flow on the venous side because venous side the resistance is low so blood always moves to the part where the resistance is low so you have to always claim the venous part a bit because otherwise what will happen more of the flow will go to the vein and the flow to the artery will decrease so for that you require a connection like this which can connect or you can use your clamp like you can use a clamp like this so this is the line you have put a y connector in the arterial line one goes to the femoral artery the second goes to jugular vein and which the one which goes to jugular vein is partially clamped always because you want to give less flow to the vein and more flow to the artery. Okay. Your requirement of the heparin will increase and you have to maintain higher acidity because more connections so that will increase. Problem in managing VAV is increased risk of thromboembolic phenomena, bleeding risk increases and bedside complexity also increases because of new cannula, new circuit and new CLS approach. So when you look out for the, uh, you have to always see the flow in both artery as well as in the vein, you have to look for the tube kinking, flow distribution is proper. Okay, and you have to maintain at least one liter of flow in both the cannulas, otherwise the cannula can get blocked. Okay. Management wise, once the heart recovers, you can easily switch over to VV ECMO. You have to be mindful as I told you, and you have to keep the ACT on higher side. Okay. So you require both heart and lung support, it is hybrid ECMO, only lung support, VV ECMO, only heart support, VA ECMO. So this is just to summarize types of ECMO at the time of initiation. You have three types of ECMO. We can think of VA ECMO for only cardiac support, VAV for both heart and lung support in case of septic myocarditis or septic myocarditis in ARDS both together or VV ECMO only for lung support. And during run you can switch over VA ECMO to VAV for a north south syndrome if the patient develops then you have to switch over to VAV. VV ECMO you have to switch over to VVA if the patient develops cardiac failure especially right ventricular failure or pH goes up. <coughs> Based on configuration, it can be VVAV or VVAVA. Again, two drainage cannula from femoral or IJV, and the return cannula one goes to femoral vein, femoral artery, or subclavian artery, and one goes to the jugular vein. Okay. Then VLA, VA, again for a cardiac stun with a LA vent you give here so you drain both from the vein and the LA so drainage is in femoral vein and LA and the return is in the femoral artery or subclavian artery. VPA here you are using one drainage and two returns one goes to the femoral artery and one goes to the PA the return and the drainage is venous this is for RV failure or PH when the patient does severe pulmonary hypertension. VPA again for RV failure or PH is high you have to think of again you are using only two uh, cannulation here one only thing is return cannula instead of putting in IGV you are putting in a PA again for refractory hypoxia RV filler and PH you can switch over to VV into VVLA or you can just do a sept atrial septostomy and whenever you can use any of this mode if you use double lumen cannula it is DLVV you put it okay that's it the factors that determine the types of ECMO is first organ you need to support. If you just want to unload the heart, just think of V ECMO, nothing else. If you want to unload heart, you have to ask yourself only one question, what you want to do it. If you want to unload the heart, just go for V ECMO. If you want to support the lung with normal or nearly normal cardiac functions, just think of VV ECMO. So ejection fraction of 30 does not mean that you have to switch over to V ECMO. Even if the ejection fraction is 30 long standing and right now patient comes only with a lung failure, you have to just support the lungs and just consider VV ECMO. If you want to support both heart and lung, then VAV. And if you just want to remove CO2, then think of ECCO2R. Second factor it depends on the condition at the time of initiation. Patient suppose even with the lung disease or severe ARDS, patient goes into cardiac arrest. 
you know other option than to go for a VA ECMO at that time. So condition at the time of initiation is important. <coughs> Severe hypotension, very high anotropy score, more than 100. Again, you have to think in terms of VVA ECMO. Again, it depends on the availability of vascular access. If there is a limitation of venous uh, lines, then you might have to think of doing double lumen venu VVA or VA ECMO. And again, the last factor which it depends on is experience and the comfort of the centers. So hybrid mirrors are uncommon, but they have more flexibility and possibilities. It will support both heart and lungs. Hybrid mode is the future. It is going to be more patient tail tailored mode. And stepwise, uh, you can always upgrade or degrade the uh, approach. Pulmonary artery can be converted for right heart support. Okay. And it is going to be percutaneous and minimum wisdom. Only issues is going to be, you have to put an additional cannula, new circuit, new SLS approach. So the bedside complexity will increase and application, application depends on the local experience. Thank you. So with this, we are finishing with the first session. A uh, few questions uh, which has been asked. I'll just read out the questions and uh, uh, we'll answer that. One question was time of switching from prone to prone to ECMO for a VV ECMO support. <coughs> See, basically, I think Dipanjan is new to your style. Answer this question. Basically, uh, when you give a prone position to the patient, and the patient does not improve in one or two cycles, you have to judge how is the improvement. If the prone position, the improvement is significant improvement, you can just try make it supine and see what happens okay uh, again supine condition goes down but prone condition is good you can give a second cycle or you can give third cycle also and see how if there's no response in three cycles in the, in the even in supine position again then in that case you have to think of putting the person on ECMO second thing if after proning there is no significant improvement it's just, just marginal improvement I think there's no point in waiting for a second and third and fourth cycle. It, it, it is only going to delay unnecessarily. So I think in that case, you should go for a VV ECMO at earliest. Second question was uh, the difference between conventional and ECMO oxygenator. I think Dr. Pobani has answered that in chat. Only one point I want to add is uh, the conventional oxygenator is basically polypropylene. So it, la it has got a, a plasma leak.